This lesson deals with a spice phaser analysis. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 8 starting on page 31. As we've seen in our last video, measuring magnitude and angle in the time domain can be quite tedious. Turns out there actually is a phaser option in the original spice program. This also exists in pSpice. It's invoked with what's called the .ac analysis option. Let's take a look at that last example again and do it in the frequency domain instead of the time domain. I'll use the same node numbering, although you don't have to. Call this node 1 and node 2. My voltage source is between 1 and 0, inductance between 1 and 2, capacitance and resistance between 2 and 0. So I have a title and a dot end, and then my schematic again. What's different here now is for V sub S, we're not going to specify a sine wave, but a phaser. Instead of putting sine, we'll put AC, and then the magnitude and angle of the phaser. In this case, it was 100 at angle 0. The default here is 0, so if you don't type this, that's what's going to be used. So instead of a dot transient analysis, we're going to do a dot AC analysis for the phaser and specify four things. The sweep of the x-axis, the number of points per sweep, and then a start and a stop frequency. Now this problem, I'm only interested in one point, and that's this 318.31 hertz. But to get a graph, I minimally have to have two points. Let's go a little bit farther. Let's put 200 points on the screen so we get a smooth graph. That's what this is going to do. Now the second term here can be one of three things. It can be LIN for linear. OCT for octave, and then DEC for decade. The decade means is that we're going to be plotting in steps of 10, and the number of points per decade we can specify here is 200. I just did one decade, a factor of 10, going from 318.31 to 3.1831K. Now what's actually being graphed is an equal spacing of terms on a log scale. The first point is 318.31 hertz, this is the x-axis, but then we're going to multiply that by 10 raised to the 0 divided by 200. The next point will have 1 over 200, and then likewise all the way through 200 over 200. So we're going to get an equal spacing of points on a log scale. Let's see what that looks like on the next page. Let's take a look at the output voltage. That was node voltage 2. So I can ask for the magnitude by typing VM parentheses 2. And here's the graph of what that looks like. This first data point was at 318.31 hertz, and the magnitude is 189.737. Now we'd calculated 189.75. This actually is probably more accurate than what I did by hand. To get the phase angle, we just type VP of 2. You can have uppercase or lowercase letters, doesn't make any difference. And the first data point here was at an angle of minus 18.435. That's exactly what we hand calculated. Now when you're running pSpice, the M and the P are not listed in the dialog box. You actually have to type those two. I'm not sure why they left that off, but you have to do that to get the graphs that are here. Let's next look at our inductor current. So the magnitude of the inductor current, so I, M, parentheses L. That would be the current in element L and the magnitude of the phasor current. At 200.000 milliamps, that's exactly what we hand calculated at 318.31 hertz. You can then ask for the phase by just putting a P instead of an M. I use lowercase, but either case is okay. And you get 53.13 degrees, and that's exactly what we hand calculated. Next, let's do the capacitor current. So the magnitude of the current in the capacitor C, 189.737 milliamps at that frequency of 318.31 hertz. And that's, and that's very close to what we hand calculated of 189.71 milliamps. Phase angle, IP of C was 71.565, and we had calculated exactly 71.565. Take a look at the current in the resistor, and so I'll ask for that magnitude. Here's my first data point, it's 63.246 milliamps, and we had hand calculated 63.25, so virtually identical. One other point I want to make is that the magnitude of the phaser is the default. So if you don't specify the M, you still get the magnitude of the phaser. So you can get that in the dialog box. Just at the phase angle, you have to type the P. So I'll type IP of R, and I get 18.435. That's exactly what we hand calculated. So in the phaser analysis option, we don't have to run the number of cycles out far enough till we reach steady state. Here we just get the steady state value. And this is how we run phaser analysis in SPICE. 